to the race for president, which is quickly becoming a thorny numbers game. It's your voice, your vote, only 17 days until the election and two days until that final debate. And this morning, the latest polls are painting a confusing and somewhat ominous picture. Could we be heading toward a mixed, muddled outcome which would throw our political system into turmoil? ABC's David Curley is at the White House this morning. David, good morning. Dan, I'm telling you what, this morning the polls are all over the map. Mitt Romney is leading nationwide. The president's leading in some of the big battleground states. So we are, are we on really the road to where one candidate could win the popular vote and the other win the Electoral College? It's America. We're going to win in November. If you listen to the candidates, Romney last night. The Obama campaign has become the incredible shrinking campaign. It sounds like a close race. The president with a new attack line. He's changing up so much, backtracking and sidestepping. I think it's called Romnesia. But then how do you explain this? The latest Gallup poll showing Mitt Romney up by six. Count them, six points nationwide. A blowout, right? Wrong. Even the Romney people don't believe that number. You shouldn't pay attention to just one poll. <laughs> we don't have all that much data right now, believe it or not. We don't have that much public data. The campaigns have a lot of information. We don't. We do have new state polls showing that the president holds a lead in three critical Midwest states, Iowa, Wisconsin, and most importantly, Ohio, where both candidates are spending a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money. The president with a new ad. Without President Obama's rescue of the auto industry, Ohio would have collapsed. If the president can hold those three states, he will win the Electoral College even if Mitt Romney gets more votes. Sound a little the retro, HMOs like Bush-Gore 2000, when Al Gore got more votes but George Bush became president? Well, get ready. It may not be probable, but it is possible the again. There yeah. absolutely That's could be a scenario that Romney wins the popular vote, President Obama wins the Electoral College vote, and as we know, the Electoral College winner is the one who becomes president. Just to give you a sense of how close this race is, the newspaper endorsements are starting to come out. And down in Orlando in Florida, the paper there went for Obama four years ago. Now they're going for Romney, but the Tampa paper says it's Obama. Salt Lake City going for Obama instead of Romney. So it's really a close race still as we get down to these last couple of weeks, Dan and Bianca. Razor thin indeed. All right, David, thank you. And for more on this, let's go to senior columnist for Newsweek and the Daily Beast, John Avalon. Thanks so much for coming Good in, morning, John. Good morning, guys. So how likely is a repeat of the 2000 election? And how damaging would that be for the country, given how polarized it's become? It would really be tough because, of course, it would compound all the polarization that's in our politics right now. But as we all know, we've been there before. And this is really premature. It is possible. It is still too soon to say it's likely. What we can say for certain is that this is is tight, folks. This is a photo finish we're heading to. The poll's all over the place, and it's all down to those key battleground states. Not premature to talk about Monday night's debate. Nope. Uh, it's, it's really striking how impactful the debates have been this year. Tens of millions of viewers, you can see the impact of the debate performances in the polls very shortly thereafter. Monday night's debate, will it li is it likely to have as much impact, given that it's focused on foreign policy and that we've already had two of these things? Well, first of all, as you said, I mean, this year answered the question whether Debates, debates matter. They do. They really do. And this one, I think, matters because it's, in effect, the tiebreaker. Romney won the first one going away. It really changed the dynamics of this campaign entirely. President Obama, strong second debate performance. So this is the tiebreaker. It is back to that first debate format. Bob Schieffer is uh, moderating. And it's all on foreign policy. Look, foreign policy doesn't always attract people's attention in campaigns, but it's what really matters in a presidency. And, and, and so, you know, all eyes should be on this because it's what a president does, folks. And this is a very tumultuous world right now. A lot of tipping points. And foreign policy in the news with what's going on in Libya as well. Foreign policy, typically a weak spot for Democrats, uh, not necessarily in this case, though. Right? That's been one of the fascinating things about the Obama presidency, because this has become a strength for President Obama because of the killing of Osama bin Laden, the drawdown from Iraq and Afghanistan, and the focusing on al-Qaeda. Libya, Syria, though, all these storm clouds on the horizon. The key for President Obama will be to say that Mitt Romney, who doesn't have much of a foreign policy record, really would represent a continuation or a return to the Bush era policies that were deeply unpopular. That's an argument he's going to have to prosecute. And it does come very oddly, the Democrat in a position of strength on foreign policy in this presidential election. Very unusual. People paying attention to their words and their body language yes. as well. Indeed. All right, John, thank you so much. We appreciate thank coming you coming in. And much more on the race for the White House tomorrow morning on ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos. And do join George and Diane Sawyer, who will lead our coverage 
The final presidential debate starting at 9 Eastern, Monday night.